So, are you one of those people who feel like you've never committed a crime before or you've never been arrested before because you are the most upstanding citizen? Well, hang tight because I am going to share with you the top three crimes that you commit every single day that you don't realize that you're actually committing. These are things that happen more often than not. So uh, make sure that you either share this information with your friends or your family. So I am criminal events attorney Hannah Akintoye, and uh, I'm essentially just gonna go ahead and jump right into this list. So the first thing that you do regularly that you may not know is a crime is taking money that you know somebody has lost and uh, essentially keeping it as your own. Now, I know most people are thinking, okay, well, you know, if I don't take the money, then somebody else is gonna take the money. So why should I let somebody take the money when I found it first, right? Finders keepers, that's what most people say when they find money uh, that is on the floor, on the ground, or other establishments. Uh, well, what I can say is that these things typically happen in high traffic areas. So for instance, maybe a grocery store where somebody left money and dropped it on the floor, maybe when they're going to pay, or um, maybe in amusement parks where people are not really wearing purses as much and so they may have money in their pockets and it kind of drops on the ground or on the floor or somewhere else. Uh, in these instances, usually when you're taking money that doesn't belong to you, that is really theft, right? You're keeping it as your own. And so the definition of a theft is essentially taking something and depriving the owner of that item. It doesn't really have to be something big like you know somebody's computer or laptop or somebody's expensive jewelry. It can be something as taking 20, 50, $100 bill that you saw on the floor or on the ground and pocketing it. Now, I know you're probably wondering, well, you know, I've done this so many times and I've never been arrested for it, so I doubt that I will ever be arrested for it. Well, I am going to tell you about a client of mine who actually got arrested for doing this very thing. The situation was my client was in a grocery store and they saw money in a place uh, where somebody had left it as they were checking out to pay. And believe it or not, this person actually reported it to the police. And because of that, the police were able to go back to that grocery store, rewind the camera and see that my client uh, saw a $100 bill and pocketed that money. Now, I'm sure my client was probably thinking, man, this is my luckiest day. I found it. I get to keep it. There's no way that this person would have ever thought that they would have been charged for theft for finding money. Um, and obviously, they didn't know who the owner was, so they, they, they decided to keep it. But the reason why the situation is a little bit different from what you may experience regularly is two things. One, this person actually reported it to the police. And so now there's a police report that may require a detective to investigate further. And then the second thing is this person actually remember where they left the money. In most situations, most people don't remember where they left their money or where they lost items. And so um, it's very difficult if you're going to report it to the police to actually give them a specific location or a specific time uh, regarding where you lost the money. So because this person, one, reported it to the police, and then two, uh, they were able to pinpoint the location where they lost the money. After investigations were done, the police were able to determine that my client took that money and unfortunately uh, they were able to look up his information and subsequently charge him. So um, obviously this is not uh, this is not something that is the norm, but if somebody were to report it to the police, the police technically are required to investigate further. And if they found that you were the person who stole money, uh, they would be required, uh, if you committed a crime of course, to arrest you. All right, so now the second one on my list is unauthorized use of motor vehicles. This one is one that happens usually with those who are maybe like, you know, late teens or uh, early 20s or in your college years when you take your parents car and you know you're not supposed to take it. Now, uh, unauthorized use of a motor vehicle is essentially taking somebody's car, using it and uh, not getting their permission. Now, the problem with these particular crimes is that nobody really finds out unless you do something that you're not supposed to do. Right. And so that means that you either got into a car crash or you got into some type of accident and now you have a bigger problem, right? You have an insurance issue and you also have to fix your car and then you're also dealing with the fact that somebody took your car um, and they weren't supposed to. Uh, but specifically, if you are the person who is taking somebody's car, uh, just because you've used it in the past doesn't mean that you actually have permission presently to use it. Now again, the example that I gave is with 
you know, college students, right? What happens is that maybe you're staying at home and you want to go to a party and you take your parents' car in the middle of the night and you're hoping that you can just get back uh, to the house without anybody finding out. And unfortunately, either you get busted at the party or there's a car crash or something else happens. Uh, be very careful about these situations uh, because you do not, and I repeat, you do not want to be charged with a felony. Oftentimes, people don't know that um, you can get charged for things like this. So what will happen is the police will come and investigate and they, they will uh, go to the owner of the car and they'll say, hey, you know, I know that certain situations happen or you can't find your car. Did this person have permission to take your car? And in all honesty, you could say, no, they didn't have. I didn't give them permission to take my car on that particular day. And if you tell the police that your friend or your family member who took your car without your permission uh, will likely get charged. The police are required to charge somebody if they commit a crime. Now they may say, okay, well, you, you know, do you want to press charges or do you want to move forward with charges? And uh, in most instances, if that's somebody that you care about, you'll probably say no. But in other instances, they may not even ask for your for your opinion. They may just simply go forward and uh, prosecute the person who took your car uh, without your permission. So an authorized use of motor vehicles is really important. Always important to remember that um, you know if you're taking somebody's car, always ask for the permission. It's that simple. Uh, because having a felony on your record and trying to get that scrubbed from your record is a whole other process. And the final one on my list, number three, is uh, illegal transportation of firearms. Now, this is going to pertain to the people who actually have registered, you know, lawfully registered firearms. Of course, if it's not lawfully registered, then that's a crime of its own. I don't, uh, I don't condone you taking a firearm anywhere without it being lawfully registered. So make sure you have it registered in the first place. Uh, but specifically, uh, what people don't realize is that um, in some states there is a difference between having a firearm registered and then also having it registered to carry it concealed, right? Having a concealed carry permit is very different from having a, uh, you know, a registration certificate in your particular state. Another thing that people don't realize is that just because you have it registered in your state doesn't mean that that registration is valid in all 50 states. Now, it's very likely that you are going to need your firearm to um, travel if you're moving, for instance. And so if you're moving from one state to another, what you will want to know is uh, are the laws in the particular state, of course, that you currently have it registered in, and also the laws in the state that you are intending to register it in as well. Now, with respect to transporting the firearm, if it is not licensed in the states that you are passing through, you want to make sure that you transport that firearm lawfully. What most people will do is they'll either carry it on their person or uh, what's more common is they'll put it in the glove compartment. Now, when you're transporting a firearm and you know the states, uh, they all have varying laws, but when you're transporting a firearm, the purpose of the laws for illegal transportation of firearm is to ensure that you're not carrying a firearm that can quickly be accessed and used, right? And so, for instance, if you put that firearm in a glove compartment as the driver of the vehicle, that is easily reachable and you can easily take that firearm and use it. Now, I'm, I'm sure you're thinking, well, it's counterproductive, right? The reason why I got the firearm is to be able to quickly use it if I need to or if I need to protect myself. I get it but I didn't make these laws, <laughs> okay? So what you will probably need to do is ensure that the firearm is not a, in a place that is in the driver or passenger compartment, but rather in a place that is outside of that compartment. A safe area to put it would probably be in the trunk of your car, you know, if you have a trunk uh, that is associated with your car. And then in addition to that, you'll probably want to remove any ammunition from the firearm and put that in a separate compartment. That is the safest way to transport a firearm. That way, you know, let's say you get pulled over by the police and, um, you know, they're asking if you have any weapons on you, you know, you can say, where the firearm is, but most importantly, they don't think or they can't really say that, well, you are a threat because one, you can't reach the firearm. Two, uh, the firearm is in a place where uh, it is in a locked position and, and some states require that the firearm be um, in a locked compartment depending on how you're transporting it. And then also the ammunition is out of it. So in order for somebody to actually fire a projectile out of that firearm, one, they'd have to get up, get out of the car, get into the trunk, 
They'd have to get the ammunition. They'd have to load the firearm with that ammunition. And then they'd have to, you know, essentially fire the firearm. So one, it, it keeps you safe in some way, shape or form, especially if you're getting pulled over. But most important, a lot of these, you know, transportation of firearm laws require that the firearm be in some other separate compartment. The reason why I am saying this one is because I have had so many clients get charged with felony um, gun possession laws, even though that their firearm is lawfully uh, registered in their state because, you know, they went somewhere and they had the firearm in the glove compartment or they had the firearm even even in a separate compartment, but it was loaded. Uh, all of these little details do in fact matter and um, it can result in you unfortunately getting charged with a felony, uh, even though your, your gun was registered lawfully in your home state. So uh, make sure that you uh, know the laws. Ignorance of the law is never going to be an excuse. Uh, if you were ever charged with a felony uh, gun possession charge in court. So make sure that you know the laws wherever you're going to ensure that you don't get charged with a, with a felony unnecessarily. So I hope all that information is helpful to you. If you have questions, feel free to uh, comment them below uh, or you can message me um, directly here or on my website, mydclaw.com and I'm always happy to chat with you further. As always, stay safe and I will talk to you all soon.